Hey roamers, did you know that as you tow your vehicle down the road, you're draining your battery? Well, we have a solution for that. Hey Romer, Jamie back at you. What we're talking about today is we're talking about the towed battery charger from RVI. Um, we purchased this when we purchased our RVI brake system. Now that's going to be another video when we go over our entire tow setup, so we'll talk about that later in another video. But what I'm going to talk about today is this. Basically what this does, it's a charger that charges your batteries as you're driving down the road. So when you're driving down the road you have to put your vehicle in auxiliary on the in the ignition uh, that's so that your front wheels will freely turn as you're towing down towing down the road so what this does what it does it utilizes the power from your RV runs through this system and it charges your battery so it's on demand it only charges as needed so it's kind of monitoring the status of your battery it's also backflow and polarity protected so you don't have to worry about any of that stuff what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you everything that comes inside of the box. So I'm going to go and open that up and show you what's inside. Here's the instructions so we can toss those in the trash. No, not really. This is something you actually need. Um, and it, it actually has the installation instructions in here. And it does it step by step, tells you how to do it. Pretty simple. It takes about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes to install. So what we have is we have the charger itself. And then if you can see here, on one side of it, it says RV plus and minus, and on the other side, it says battery plus and minus. When we go to install it, obviously, the battery is going to go, one of these leads is going to go to the plus side of the battery, and the other side is going to go to the minus side of the battery. And then what we're going to have to do with this is we're going to have to go to the plug that's on the front of the vehicle and we're going to have to wire that into the plug. Um, not a big deal, but we're going to show that in the installation part of the, of the video here. They also provide zip ties for being able to zip tie this so it's not flopping around underneath your, in your engine compartment there. And then also if you have excess wires or whatever, you can kind of uh, round those up and, and zip time so they're not flopping all around and get stuck on anything while you're driving down the road. I just wanted to clarify that we're not associated in any way with RVI Breaker. We're not affiliates. We actually purchased this item because I felt it was something that we needed when we purchased our brake system. Now what we need to do is determine uh, obviously we know we're going to be hooking up to the positive and negative side of the battery but where we can put the actual charger so it's in a, a good safe place where it's not going to plop down anywhere. Obviously we're going to zip tie it, but just kind of determine where we want to put it uh, before we start doing our wiring so we have an idea. We come in with a plan. I decided to mount it on top of my fuse panel uh, box here. Um, this is where the fuses go, right there. So I thought this would be a good spot. And what I'm going to do, um, they do provide screws where you can actually screw it here and here. But I don't want to do that because of water issues. So what I did is I purchased Velcro. And I'm going to mount Velcro on the back of the charger. And also on top of the fuse box lid. So I'm going to clean it up right now, put my Velcro on there, and then we'll proceed to running the wires. So I'm just using some glass cleaner. Um, I just want to make sure there's no grease or oil or anything like that that's going to stop the Velcro from sticking down really well. So I'm just cleaning that with some glass cleaner. I'm doing it on both sides. I don't know if there's anything on this or not, but I'm just going to get that all nice and clean. And then I'm going to stick my Velcro on the back of here and put that down. And then I'm going to start my wiring. I'm going to want scissors.
Now what I'm doing is I'm going to be hooking up the positive and negative side to the battery. And that's virtually impossible to make a mistake on because on the charger here it shows battery. And those are the two leads that go to the battery. And then these wires here are the two leads that go to the plug for the RV. So just do the positive side here. So we got the positive side done. Now we need to do the negative side. And it's basically the same process. So as you can see, um, we got the blue light flashing on the battery, so that means on the battery side of the charger. So that means we have power going to the charging unit from the battery. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these wires, because it's just kind of flopping around, I'm going to wrap them up nicely and kind of zip time. I might zip time here to the negative side here, um, but also leave, leave enough slack so that if I need to change out the battery, I'll be able to do so. So now we're going to work on what's considered the RV side. Uh, I need to run this down in the front here to where my base plate is and then to the plug uh, where my RV, the line that goes from my RV to the car, I need to get to that plug so I need to put this down in the front but make sure that it's not going to be in the way of anything that's uh, any moving parts in the vehicle. So just going to figure a good place to run that down and then secure it and then wire it to the plug after a look at my options of being able to run my wire that goes down to my plug here i wanted to keep it away from any moving parts but also heat to protect the wires so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this piece off here it comes off really easy and then run my wires down towards the front of the grill here so all you got to do is you can take a screwdriver and then these things just kind of pop up these little tabs here you want to pull that out and then this will pop out really easy and you want to make sure and save these don't lose them because you need them to hold this piece back on so i'm going to go through and take all these out and then this piece will come off and i'll be able to run my wires behind the, the grill here and that way it'll be protected from heat and uh, any moving parts in the engine Now this piece will just uh, come off like so. And then what I want to do is I want to be able to run my wires uh, down through here, right behind the grill here, and then come out where my receptacle is. Uh, that way that keeps it away from the hot uh, radiator and also any moving parts down in here. So I'm just going to fish this through here and then I'm going to zip tie it off in some places to keep it secure. So now that I ran my, my line uh, down behind the grill here, it's loose. So I'm going to take some zip ties and I'm gonna, in places I'm going to kind of just secure it so that it's not flopping around so it's nice and secure and I don't have to worry about it moving into anything that's hot or moving or whatever. So I'm just going to go through now, zip tie it in a few places. After I'm done with that, then I'll get to wiring it in the plug there. Now that I ran my line, I also uh, zip tied those. So I zip tied it here, zip tied it over here, and then also down on the bottom where I ran it through where my uh, plug is, I also zip tied it to the base plate. So we're pretty good there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this piece back on because I don't need access to this anymore. So I'm going to get that put back on, and then I'm going to get to wiring my plug up front here. Now what I'm doing is I'm unscrewing my plug here. From the base plate. 
uh, so I have access to the wiring in this plug because that's where those two wires have to go. One goes to the ground and another one goes to a constant 12 volt source so you have power running through it at all times to be able to keep the, the battery charged. So we have that loose. They taped this up when they did their connection so I just need to take that off. I retape it once it's all once I'm all done with what I'm doing. You can sli just slide this back. The next step what we're going to be doing is we're going to determine how much uh, uh, wire we need. Uh, so I just want to get rid of my excess. But I also want to leave myself enough so if I need to get in here and do any work or something happens in the future, I don't want it too short. So I'm going to leave myself a little bit of room. So I'm going to cut it off like right about there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. And then we're going to strip each end and pull this apart like so. We're just going to take our wire strippers and we're going to give ourselves a little bit to be able to go in, strip that back, and then do the same thing with the black wire. strip that back and then I'm going to run those through here okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first hook up my negative side so I'm going to hook up my ground side first so what I need to do is undo my white side, which is the ground. There we go. Okay, and we're just going to twist these two together. Uh, one snag that I ran into was trying to, when I took the white wire, which was the ground that was already in here, and the black wire that I brought from the charging unit, when I twisted them together, they would not both fit in that hole. I uh, tried numerous times to do it, and it wouldn't, and when I would stick it in there, wires would be, be protruding. And with those wires protruding, they could get over here and cause, out it, cause it to short out. So what I ended up doing was, I ran a little pigtail for my ground. So I took the white wire that was already on here, and the black coming from my charger, and this pigtail, and wired those together... Um, all I had was a wire nut, so that's what I hooked it up with. So I twisted them together, put the wire nut on there. It'll be fine because what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape that all together and the wire nut won't be able to back off or anything, so it should stay connected uh, just fine. So now what we need to do is just take, this is my ground, and this is where I was going to put my ground before I had to do the pigtail. So I just need to put that in there, screw that in. And when you make those connections, you just want to make sure that there's no straggling wire sticking out. Because if those cross over to another uh, connection, it'll cause it to short out and things won't work correctly. Get it good and snug and then just kind of do a tug test, make sure it's in there good. Okay, and that's that, the ground. And then like I said before, we want this to go to a constant... 12 volt source so now that I have my lines all hooked up I have my ground hooked up and then also my 12 volt line um, if you go to RVI's YouTube channel they're going to show it going to this terminal right here which says S on it when I had my uh, base plate and my wiring done the gentleman who who uh, did my wiring and also installed the base plate built his own uh, umbilical so the plug the line that goes from the RV to the front of the car and plugs in here he built his own so when I asked him I told him I was going to be installing this uh, brake charger I mean battery charger unit he told me to inst run my positive to the center of this when you check out RVI's if you watch their video it shows it 
going to this terminal here. So if you're having your base plate installed and they're doing your wiring as well, wherever you're having your hitch installed, you may want to ask them like I did where you should be running the positive line. If you're buying something off the rack where the umbilical is pre-made and it's not made by a shop where they did your hitch or whatever, you most likely are probably going to want to go to this one. But you may want to double check with RVI just to make sure that you are hooking it up to the correct terminal. I wanted to start my taping here so this boot doesn't pull apart and, and let water get in there. So I just wanted to make sure and get that taped up so there's no chance of that coming loose and letting water get in there. Now, I do, now all we need to do is get this up in here and get that mounted back on there and we should be good to go. That's all hooked up. So we go ahead and get this cleaned up and then I'm just gonna look up top, make sure everything's all buttoned up really nicely. And then to be able to check to make sure if the RV is wired correctly, the RV side of the battery charger, I'm going to have to plug this into the RV, um, turn the RV on, and then I'll be able to see the light come on on the battery charger. So now what I want to do is I just want to make sure that everything is uh, properly connected. To do so, I need to plug in the umbilical from the RV to the vehicle. So that's our electrical line that runs from the RV to the vehicle, supplying the 12 volt power. And the motor has to be running to check this. So I'm sorry for the engine noise, but to be able to check it and make sure everything's good, it has to be on. So I'm gonna show you uh, what we got going. If everything is working correctly, we should have a green light flashing on the RV side and then a blue light on the uh, battery side. So let's go over and check that out. So as you can see, the RV side is flashing green, so that's good, that's what we want. And then the blue light is flashing on the battery side, and that's good as well. So everything seems to be connected correctly and I just wanted to show you when I keep referring to umbilical this is what I'm talking about I'm talking about this I'm talking about sorry I went over here because of the Sun I'm talking about that electrical line that plugs into the back of the RV and then the other runs into the front on the base plate so everything's hooked up uh, correctly we got the flashing lights like we want that's going to complete the install of the RVI tow battery charger um, now we can feel secure knowing that our battery is being charged as we're pulling this vehicle down the road so we don't won't have to worry about any dead batteries I hope this video was helpful um, if you have any questions go ahead and put them down in the comment section below also, in the, I'm going to put in the description below a link for RVI brake in this uh, unit here so you can look that up on their website. And if you're not yet a subscriber, make sure and hit the subscribe button and ring that bell so you'll be notified each time we put out a new video. And make sure to leave a comment so you can be part of the conversation. Until next time, we'll see you.